tell me what you see. Open your eyes, the truth will be revealed. Open your mind and see the other side. Open your heart and bring your love and come. Bring Welcome back to the Now Morning Show. Now, this morning, we're going to be talking about the Lilliput Children's Theatre, their 2023 production, Dance and Fight. And so joining us this morning is the drama director, Mr. Wendell Man Warren. Good Wendell, morning. good morning. Good morning, Kimberly. How are you this morning? Here. I real good, you know. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Up early. <laughs> Thank up goodness, early. no rain this morning. Yes. So, so we're thankful nice for that. walk over the road. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know you live close by. Around the corner. Okay, good. Lucky yeah. you. <laughs> so, when I'll be talking about the Lilliput Children's Theatre, the Dance and Fight, their 2023 mm -hmm. production. But before we get to that, give us a little context in terms of who is Lilliput or what is Lilliput? Well, Lilliput Theatre, Children's Theatre Company, was founded by Noble Douglas, the indomitable Auntie Noble, mm -hmm. and Tony Hall, the late great Tony Hall in 1975. Initially, I think they were called Rounders Theatre. And um, they, they, <clears throat> One of the people that emerged in the early Lilliput uh, Rounders Theatre was a woman by the name of Martina Laird, who's now one of the biggest actresses in London. She appears regularly on TV shows and on the West End. And um, I had the pleasure to work with Martina a couple of years ago. So the Lilliput um, talent pool runs really deep. Yeah. You know, Meryl Mahabia, who was uh, the designer for a long time, she was a early Lilliputian, the Walker Daughters. Um, so many people were, you know, cut their teeth on Dante Noble. Initially, was more focused on dance, and then Tony came and brought the theatre component. And then John Isaacs later came on board as the drama director, and he's the one who invited me to assist him. I didn't know nothing about teaching. Well, that's the thing, because I wanted to ask you, how did you get involved yeah, you know, to yeah. become the well, drama director? Through, I mean, I was involved in theatre. I did a lot of workshopping and worked with Tim Theatre and the Bagas Company and that sort of thing. And then we started up the Callaloo Company with Peter Minchell. Mm -hmm. And John was one of the guys there. And we would lead sessions. And he observed me leading sessions. And he invited me to assist him. And then when he thought I was good enough, he left. <laughs> <laughs> he just handed over the reins. Yeah, he just handed yes. over the reins to me. So yes. I've been there continuously for since 1995. Wow. Yeah, 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 I never thought I'd be there for, for that five long. years, yeah. much less so then so what many years. kept you over time? Working with the young people, working with the children, working and learning from them, because I learned a lot during that time while I was there. You know, I learned a lot about how to understand young people being not too old at the time. I was yes. in my 20s, you know. Yes, yes. I had a good rapport with them. And um, they were a little intimidating. Some of them were so bright and knew what they were doing kind of thing. And what I observed when I got there is that neither John nor Noble sort of spoke down to them like they were babies, this. Mm -hmm. And the production itself was always on the level of like a legit professional production. Yes. Sometimes it's like, these people crazy, it's just Turin. <laughs> but I'm amazed every time that the Turin do rise to the occasion. And they're way more resilient than some of us, you know, imagine and give them credit for. Mm -hmm. And they're way more imaginative and daring sometimes. You know, some of the things, some of the places they want to go up to say, oh, yo, hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet. Not yet. Let's take you there, yes. Let's that Yes, in. yes, yes. But it's, it's very important to, the process of working with them is the most important thing. Working with them, hearing their issues, hearing their concerns, hearing their take on things. Mm -hmm. They're questioning a lot of adult behavior. They're sort of imitating of adult behavior. And that's where this whole idea of the dance and fight is this year. The focus is on how do we deal with the issue of school violence? And when I look at a lot of these school violence scenarios, I see a lot of girls, way more girls than boys, involved in, in, in a lot of these videos that have gone viral in the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the old question, is it that this violence is new or is it always there and the cameras are now capturing it? Well, maybe it's a bit of both, but um, it's quite scary when you look at it, you know, and some, some and of them are the, quite frenzied. Of course. You know? And so how is the is the production supposed to help with that? But first of all, let's talk mm -hmm. about the production, all and right. we'll come back to that one. So tell right. us about Dance and Fight. So Dance and Fight is, is the coming together of Lilliput Children's Theatre Company to do their annual production. Right. And then the NDDC, Noble Douglas Dance Company, they also do an annual production. But with COVID, the two shows were brought mm -hmm. together last mm -hmm. year for the first time, and it worked. It mm -hmm. catered to a broader audience, and people thoroughly enjoyed it. And I think both sides benefited from a bit of the other. Mm -hmm. um, so we're coming together to do it again. Um, it's a bit of a challenge for me as a director because the choreographers are off choreographing. They dance and 
when you say what that dance means is like, I don't know, I just like the music. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to say, well, what if what if we kind of tailor it this way or we yeah. introduce this kind of element to it and whatnot? And they were very receptive. Right. So when I see the finished results, I was like, okay, yeah, that will work. And what sort of elements can we see coming out of the of this uh, production? Well, the idea of dance and fight is taken from a quote by the legendary mass man, black Indian, late Nari Apru, who um, in a conversation I had with him many years ago, I said, you know, we had a long talk about mass and carnival and playing mass. And I said, at the end of the day, Nari was mass. And he said, mass is dance and fight. It's that combination of beauty and that competitive spirit, showing off your, your moves, and being prepared to bust head, you know, because a lot of these old characters, they were kind of warrior mass. So I thought, okay, let me use these characters, let's use these warrior mass traditions that we have, and let me examine the idea of fighting. So we're looking at, why do we have these characters, you know? It's like, why do we have a baby doll? I said to him, why do you think we have a baby doll? He said, because there are lots of mothers with children with no fathers. Mm -hmm. So good, we have a phenomenon on the ground here and we have a thing called carnival, and we have an imagination, and we find a way to create a character that addresses this, this issue. situation yeah. or this issue. Yeah. So this is what I was trying to show them, that a lot of these characters are not just superfluous or take, to be taken for granted. We can still use them. So how could you use a baby doll, for instance, to deal with the issue that I put to them, the issue of school violence? And some interesting things came out. Mm -hmm. We also use an extempo. Do you want to explain some extempo music? So they have extempos about, you know, one of the things I discovered is that a lot of the triggers for fighting in school with girls is pulling hair. Mm. Pulling hair, who would have thought, right? And then they have this thing called jump scaring and going online and seeing who with who friend and who is who friend. Mm. And so that online bullying thing and the, the response comes back to like, you know, a kind fight. of frenzy. Yeah, and yeah. you know, somebody pulls somebody here and somebody ball fight. And before you know it, we have a fight. We have a fight. So wow. I figure, well, let me give them some characters to with that. Let me fight verbally. Mm -hmm. Let me fight artistically. Let me fight through some rubber talk. Let me fight through some baby dolls, challenging another baby doll or pretty dolly. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, let's look at the saga boy, yeah. that fellow who's not taking responsibility and just want to lie. Maybe he's a drunken sailor. So it's all that playing up with all yeah. these characters in an imaginative way to deal with the issues. And they write their pieces. They, deal with, they bring their issues forward. They deal with the monologues. You know, and after that, I say, like, okay, we can't just complain and moan. We have to have solutions. Mm -hmm. So let's find a way to be creative in our solution making. And I challenge you to make a Piro speech. So I'm just giving them different cultural forms yeah. and engaging them in different exercises and different but, issues but Wendell, to make a show. I, I, I love how you mentioned the cultural forms because I'm mm -hmm. hearing a lot of what people may say typical carnival characters yeah. outside of the carnival season. Was that done on purpose? Absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, because they transcend just the carnival. Mm -hmm. our, our ability to use them in a theatrical way doesn't exist only within the carnival. Mm -hmm. And they shouldn't just be siloed there because they're actually archetypes that you know that have taken on the form of carnival characters. But as I say, a lot of them are warrior based, yeah? yeah. So what is the robber doing by saying he's the baddest and the dreadest and responsible for all the mayhem and murder in the world? You know, it forces us to look at all the murder and mayhem in the world. Mm -hmm. What is the Piro saying when he's the king of bombast and just big words and talking, 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 and at the end of the day, what is he saying? You know, maybe we have some of those people parading every day, peering down the place, you know? <laughs> As I described the baby doll phenomenon, yes, that ain't yes, going away, is exactly. it? Exactly. It was here from since whenever, and it's yeah. going to be here time memorial. I mean, so where can we get tickets? Where, where is it showing, that sort of thing? So and it's what at is Queen's it Hall mm -hmm. next Saturday and Sunday, 6th and 7th of May, Queen's Hall. And both shows at 6.30 p.m. And uh, tickets are available at Queen's Hall box office or through Lilliput members. You could check us out on Facebook at Lilliput Theatre on Facebook or Lilliput underscore theatre on Instagram. I don't know numbers. And all that. I can't <laughs> remember the okay. number to call. <laughs> My tickets are only you. $100. Yes. And because, as I say, it's a combination of the, the children's theatre company, which starts from babies and goes up to like 18 years old, and then these adults with the Noble Douglas Dance Company, it, it's for the whole family, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Now, Wendell, I know you would have mentioned some at the top, but tell us who are some of the other people coming out of the Lilliput uh, Dance Theatre? Well, our two tutors to begin with, Tonya Evans and Elisha Bartels. I both met them when I joined Lilliput, so mm -hmm. I taught them for a while, and then Elisha went on to do theatre in DC and was a stage manager and a, a writer and an actress and a dancer. Tonya is now the number one stage manager in Trinidad and Tobago. You can't get her 
because she's so busy and heavily <laughs> yes. booked, um, yes. which is good, you know, and, and because my thing is emerging at a time when you couldn't live from this. It's good to see people a generation later mm -hmm. being able to live for the most part from doing this. We have a young man by the name of Nikolai Labari who now lives in London and actually runs a theatre company in London, a proper theatre company. He's the artistic director for a show on the West End called Tina, the story of Tina Turner, okay, which nice. is touring in Australia. And <clears throat> he's flying out to Australia to open it and all kind of thing. Zara Bartels, uh, she danced on The Lion King for many, many years, and she was then the head of well, when she stopped dancing, head of all the choreography and making sure everybody knew what was they had to do. Um, we have people all over the place doing their thing. And, and a lot of them don't actually end up in performance. They end up as, you know, diplomats or doctors or what have you. But they all credit Lilliput with giving them that sense of self, that sense of being able to speak up, speak out, be clear, to be articulate, and to be empathetic. Because that's one of the first things we try to instill in, in the lily pushons, you know. Yeah, and the lily pushons. I love yeah, it because yeah. that was going to be my next question. I mean, we have these amazing people uh, coming out of the lily put mm -hmm. theatre, doing so many amazing things. How important do you think it is for parents, not just for this theatre company, but to get their children involved in theatre at a young age? Absolutely essential. And I say this as someone who didn't get into theatre as a young age, and didn't know um, the value of theatre until I was. You know, in my late teens, a big, mm -hmm. a, a big man, you know, mm -hmm. and um, came to understand how much of a tool theatre is for self-development, for awareness, and I say for empathy building. Yeah. You, know, you can't play a character unless you are empathetic to that character, mm -hmm. and an actor is called upon to play any character. You know, the things you're taught is you can't judge your character and portray it properly. So I can't come with all kind of notions about my character. Like, a bad guy never sees himself as a bad a guy. Bad he will guy, never true. describe himself as a bad guy. He'll always find the positive to highlight. But the person that he's dealing with or say, nah, that fellow, he real dry, or he this, or he that, or the other. So just understanding how nuanced human existence is and human behavior is so fascinating. So, and the theater helps you appreciate that. Also, it's a great teaching tool. You know, I mean, look, we're looking at issues. We're dealing with issues. Um, you could learn history through theater. You could make history come alive instead of a bunch of dates and boring facts. And facts and data. Mm -hmm. Facts and data. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's a story, first of all. And that's why I like to emphasize the story behind the history. Yeah. You know? So, like, say, Cambole is a moment in time, right? And then two went and say, let us tell this story, mm. right? That's her version of the story. The story is based on a reality, but everybody gets a chance to tell their version of, of the story. Mm -hmm. And it's very important for us to tell our story, especially considering that we have a very rich story. History, yeah, yeah, yeah of we course. have a boring story at yeah, all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, no, but before you go, I really want to know, we've been hearing a tout a lot in the media, use arts and culture to help mm -hmm. the youth, use arts and culture to help the youth. And I want to ask you, because I know you are involved in various arms, theater, mm -hmm. music, I mean, you voice arts, you do mm -hmm. basically everything. Give me an example of how we can actually use art to help what we're seeing in the mainstream media right now as we relate to the school violence, as we relate to the robberies that's taking place, the increasing murder rates. How can we attack them from young to well, get them it. on the right path? Well, by the time they're done out in a row that's shooting it. and killing people, it's too late. Right? So it has to be from young and it has to be that it's consistent because what happens many times is that people are given a sort of a dip their toe in the water and then... Mm they don't stick with it or they don't get a chance to stick with it. It's the kind of thing, I always tell people, arts is a discipline, first and foremost, right? Any aspect of the arts is, is a discipline. So you have to be disciplined, you have to be committed, you have to be prepared to take risk, you have to trust the people you're working with. So many fundamental things are built in there. And when you look at a lot of the issues right now, you know, there's no trust, no love. You know, people don't trust the system, they don't trust each other, they watch them on another side eye, and waiting to pull here in an in a instant, yes. <laughs> you know, or jump scare one another. Yes, yes. So we have, we have to say, I like to say we have the tools of this at our disposal is just to, to understand that and reconnect to that. All the ideas of year pan, school in pan, or pan in school, or whatever they want to call it, mm -hmm. we could see the impact of that. When you, when you give someone a skill, when you challenge them, when you take them beyond the normal self, you know, they discover that they have they're capable of way much more. So as a society, that's that's what you want in the people. You want a sense of, yeah, more is possible. Not, nah, boy, 
not here, boy. You can't get this here, boy, because we still do that. Mm -hmm. We still kill a lot of dreams. We still snuff out a lot of dreams. We still setting up a lot of people, giving them training and telling them they're entrepreneurs. But let me take that to the bank now. Mm. How are we going to entrepreneurize all this training I have? So you lead into a lot of frustration, a lot of, you know, people on the edge, you know, feeling. And thinking that there's one way to get what they need. One way to yeah. get what they need. And I've seen so many people get out of here and thrive, mm. you know, do things they never imagined they would have been able to do here. So for me, that's one of the indictable things about this space that I seek to challenge. Uh, sort of challenge all my life just by committing to being here and doing what I do here because yeah. I've had ample opportunity to do it anywhere else. Yeah. But I constantly choose to work here. It's getting tougher. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to put a pin in that, Wendell, and we're going to have to dig down on that. But before you go, just remind us when the event is taking place, where and how can we uh, get tickets? Well, the event takes place at Queen's Hall next Saturday and Sunday, right. 6th, 7th May. Tickets are available at the Queen's Hall box office or through the, the Noble Douglas Dance Company members. Uh, Lilliput, you could check for info on Facebook, Lilliput Facebook, right. or Lilliput underscore theater. Lilliput theater on Facebook, or Lilliput underscore theater Instagram. Instagram. They'll have way, way more information than I have <laughs> when it gets to reality. I want to also mention one more yes, person yes. who's outside doing great things. That's a Lilliputian, who I had the pleasure of working with and helping mold and shape and influence. And she has also influenced me and molded and shaped me. Emily Aboud is currently running a show on the West End right. in London as we speak yes. to rave reviews. Okay. And it all started at, at Lilliput. Yeah. <laughs> well, Wanda, let me thank you so much for joining us as the drama director. I know that the children mm -hmm. are under good tutelage. And so we look forward to see what's happening next weekend. So thank I'm you so much for joining us. <laughs> 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 and that was Wendell Man Warren, the drama director at the Lilliput Children's Theatre, just telling us about an upcoming show that's taking place on May 6th and 7th. You're on the Now Morning Show. We're going to take a break and be right back. Stay with us. <laughs>